welcome to another edition of Coonrod's Corner. Today's topic, what RF circuit designers need to know about dielectric constant, part one. Now here's your host, John Coonrod. Hello, welcome to Coonrod's Corner. My name is John Coonrod. I am a technical marketing manager for Rogers Corporation. Today's topic will be what RF designers need to know about dielectric constant. Now this is one of those topics that on the surface uh, seems to be pretty simple, but in reality uh, there's a lot of complexities here and because of that I decided to break this up into two parts. So today is going to be part one of this topic and with that let's go ahead and get started. Now dielectric constant, uh, there's many different terms for that and I usually use the term DK and others use dielectric constant, also relative permittivity is another term. And also epsilon sub r and e sub r are terms that are used as well. Now the term dielectric constant is somewhat of a misnomer because if you look at a dielectric constant of any material over a long range of frequencies or a wide range of frequencies, what you find is the dielectric constant will change with the change in frequency. So it is actually not constant, even though most of, it call, most of us do call it dielectric constant. Uh, but there is a little bit of a misnomer there and uh, that's just the nature of the materials. The materials will change dielectric constant with a change in frequency, that's normal. Now also another thing to consider is that the dielectric constant of the material can appear to be different by the circuit performance. So one type of circuit versus another type of circuit may dis demonstrate a different type of dielectric constant with the same material, which can be a little confusing obviously, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. And then also different test methods. So one test method versus another, that can show a different dielectric constant when testing the same material. So these are all topics that are very critical for the RF designer when doing circuit design and circuit modeling, and the following information should be uh, very uh, helpful for these type of activities. Now the Rogers uh, website and our data sheets and our product selector guides has two columns for dielectric constant. We have one column that is the process dielectric constant and another column that is the design dielectric constant. Process dielectric constant or process DK is the uh, is the dielectric constant value that we obtain by testing the raw substrate or the raw material and the test method that we use is a industry standard test method per IPC uh, more specifically it's IPC-TM-2.5.5.5C and it's a clamp strip line test and this test is very good for what we use it for and how we use it is really for process control and quality control and thus the term process dielectric constant that's how we actually look at our material and control the process now the other term, uh, design dielectric constant or design DK, that's actually a little different. So that's how the material performs in circuit form. So what we do is we have the circuit made as a microstrip transmission line and then we use a microstrip differential phase length method and we evaluate how the material behaves in circuit form with circuit influences. So the design DK is really the right value to use for circuit design and circuit modeling. And again, it's actually a uh, circuit property of how the material behaves in circuit form with circuit influences. So it's not a raw material property as much as how the material performs with circuit influences. So to illustrate the design DK concept, I have uh, several pictures and a few charts that I want to go through now. Okay, now in the picture that we're looking at, we're looking at an electromagnetic wave traveling in free space at the speed of light. And then what happens when the same electromagnetic wave is in a material where the dielectric constant is higher, the wave has several different things that happens. And one of them is that it slows down. And for this picture and the next few graphs, uh, thinking about the wave velocity is important. And what that means is really that anything that is a higher dielectric constant will slow the wave down. And as the wave slows down, that is basically an indicator that is a higher dielectric constant. However, there are other things that can actually slow down an electromagnetic wave besides the dielectric constant of a substrate. So there are circuit features that can do this, as well as uh, some of the circuit features that are related to copper conductors. And the copper conductors have a surface roughness, and that roughness actually does have an effect on the wave propagation constant, and it has an effect on the velocity as well. Now I'm showing here two pictures of uh, the same material using copper that is different. So in one case, the top picture is using uh, a substrate and copper where the copper is very smooth, and the bottom picture is substrate and copper where the copper is very rough. And in the case of the rough copper, you actually do get a slower wave velocity. And again, as I said before, a slower wave velocity is going to make the circuit behave as if the dielectric constant of the material is higher. Even though it's the same dielectric constant, the phase velocity has been slowed down due to rough copper, and because of that, 
the uh, dielectric constant of the circuit as perceived by the circuit is actually going to be higher. Now the uh, surface roughness that I'm talking about, to be clear, is the surface roughness at the interface of the copper substrate interface. So as we make the laminate, that interface between the copper and the substrate, that's the copper surface roughness that I'm referring to. This uh, shown here is an excerpt from uh, one of many studies that we've done looking at the effects of copper surface roughness regarding uh, circuit effective dielectric constant. And really what the graph is showing is the impact of copper surface roughness uh, when using the same substrate but using different types of copper with different copper roughness. And essentially a rougher copper means a higher effective dielectric constant as reported by the circuit. Now, if you notice in the chart, what we've done was make uh, 50 ohm microstrip transmission line circuits, and the laminates were all using the exact same substrate. This was using 4 mil LCP laminate. And what we did was we used different coppers that had different copper types and different roughness. And you can see on the curve here, the circuits that had the copper roughness with the smoothest copper, which is the red curve, that has a copper surface roughness of about 0.5 microns RMS. That has the lowest effective dielectric constant as reported by the 50 ohm microstrip transmission lines that we were testing. And then you can see what happens with the circuits with a little rougher copper. The green curve is a little rougher, magenta curve rougher again, and finally the blue curve is using the copper with the highest uh, copper surface roughness of 3.0 microns RMS. And you can see there's quite a uh, sizable difference in circuit performance here. And you can also see that the difference in the effective dielectric constant as a number is about 0.3, and that's pretty significant, especially when you're thinking that this is all using the same substrate. There's no difference in the substrate itself. So the 0.3 difference in effective dielectric constant is only due to the copper surface roughness, and specifically the copper surface roughness slowing down the wave and the circuit perceiving a higher effective dielectric constant. There are also thickness dependencies regarding design decay, and specifically, a thinner circuit is going to be more affected by conductor effects than a thicker circuit. A thinner circuit is going to be more dominated by this copper surface roughness. If the copper surface is very rough, the thinner circuit is going to realize it much more than the thicker circuit. Now, in this picture, I'm actually showing uh, a representation of an experiment I did some time ago, and what I did was use the exact same material, same substrate, and also the same copper. And I tried to minimize any lot-to-lot -lot variation by using the same lot of copper, same lot of substrate. And what I did was make two different laminates of the exact same materials and the only difference being thickness. And the thinner laminate was using a 4 mil thick RO4350B laminate. And the thicker laminate was the same material, same copper, but thicker at 30 mils thick. And I've made these laminates, sent them off to the fabricator. The fabricator made the microstrip transmission lines. We tested it. And what we got was an average design decay for the 4 mil thick circuit of 3.95. And then the circuit made on the 30 mil thick substrate was 3.68. So you can see this is a pretty big difference. And again, what's interesting is the difference is only due to the copper surface roughness impacting the wave velocity, which means it's causing the circuit to realize a different dielectric constant. Now, if you were to go one step beyond this and go to a thicker circuit again and go to 60 mils thick, what you would find is a design decay of 3.66. And if you went thicker than that, let's say 90 mils, again, it would be 3.66. And the reason why is once the copper planes have moved far enough apart, the copper roughness no longer affects the wave propagation. And now you're really evaluating the intrinsic value of the dielectric constant of the material itself. So 3.66 is the design decay for the RO4350B laminate and that's without the copper effects. And whenever you look at a thin 4350B laminate, such as 4 mil, you will see that the design decay is much higher at 3.95, and that's really because the copper surface roughness affects the thinner laminate and the thinner circuit much more dramatically. This ends part one of this series, and in part two, what I'm gonna talk about is frequency dependencies, also the copper surface roughness, how that varies from circuit to circuit, and as well as talk about the thickness dependency in much more detail. This concludes this session of Coonrod's Corner. Thank you for watching. For additional information and technical tools, if you are not already a member, join the Rogers Technology Support Hub and gain access to calculators, technical papers, and more of Coonrod's Corner and other informational videos. Rogers Technical Information is also available at your fingertips with the Raj mobile app available for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Check it out today.